Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, Experiments at Large. Science Max! This episode of Science Max is all about earthquakes. Exciting. How do we build something that won't fall apart when shaken? Plus a lot of other ways to shake things or build things. Science! All on this episode of Science Max, Experiments at large. <laughs> Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil, and this is Science Max Experiments at Large. Today, we're going to be looking at earthquakes. Earthquakes. Huh. Today, we're going to be looking at how to build something. <laughs> that was supposed to happen earlier. Today, we're going to be looking at how to build something that stands up to the shaking of an earthquake. Mm. Earthquakes happen when two plates on the Earth's surface rub together, and it causes the ground to shake. It causes the ground to shake. Sometimes it shakes a little, sometimes it shakes a lot. Chances are you do not live in a place that has earthquakes. But if you do, ask an adult what to do during an earthquake so you can be safe. Modern buildings that are built in earthquake zones are designed to withstand the shaking. But how do scientists and engineers build a building that stands up to the shaking of an earthquake? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today. First thing we have to do is simulate an earthquake. We're going to build a shaker table. And here's what you need. Two books and... Oh. 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 Two books, four elastic bands, and four, four rubber balls. Oh, wait. Uh, okay. <laughs> four, four rubber balls. All right. So the first thing you do is actually take your four elastic bands and wrap them around your books. Put one set on one side, one set on the other side, until you have that. Then you take your four balls and you stick them in between the books in the middle-ish area, but you don't want to have them too close to the edges. And now two at the back, and ta-da! You've made your own shaker table. What are you shaking, you ask? I will show you. You build a tower, like this one here that I built out of building blocks. So here's what you do. You'll need your base to be securely attached to the shaker table. I use painter's tape because it'll come off again without harming the books. And what I want to find out is just how much shaking this tower can take before it falls apart. Ready? Oh. And there it goes! And when you've done that, what you do is you be a science maximite and you design another tower and you tape it down to your shaker table and see if you can make this tower fall down in an earthquake. And if you built it really well, it probably won't. Aha. But you don't have to just use building blocks. There's all kinds of other materials you can use. Check out this building, which is really tall, and you'll see there's a cup at the top, and that's for a baseball. Put it up at the top, and that means there's a weight up there. And then we shake it, and we see what happens. Oh, oh no! Oh, there it goes. So that is what we're going to be doing today on Science Max Experiments at Large. We're going to be making a giant shaker table and putting a giant structure on top and seeing how we design it to make sure it stands up to the shaking of an earthquake. I'm going to need an expert to help me, though. Um, oh, I know. Anne would be really good at this. Okay, all I need to do is get Anne, and we can start. Oh, come on. There it is. All right. Hey, Anne, I... Huh? I feel weird. Why do I feel weird? I think you're a chair. Well, that's not good. Oh, hold on a second. Am I... Am I good? Okay. 
Hi, Anne. Good to see you. Here's your lab coat. Thank you. So you're from Let's Talk Science, right? I am. All about science education, just like us. Today, I need your help to max out our earthquake table. This is the table this looks part, great. obviously, but this is a tower I've made out of popsicle sticks. So yeah. in order to max it out, I've already built a large shaker table. Come on. This is my large shaker table. So it's got basketballs underneath as the floor balls, but it works exactly the same. Whoa. 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 <laughs> okay, so what kind of tower should we make for the shaker table? If we want something tall, then we'll reinforce it a couple spots. But the true test, it's gotta have some sort of weight on top so that it will mimic the weight that would be on a real tower. Right, so maybe I could get a plastic bin and I'll just put some sandbags for weight inside. That would be perfect. And then balls, so that when it falls over, the balls will go everywhere. That would be perfect. Okay, great. We shake off. Uh, I don't know. I think we should just get off. Another thing that happens during an earthquake is soil liquefaction. Liquefaction means something turns to liquid. In this case, the very ground you might be standing on. Here's how you can experiment with soil liquefaction. All you need is a plastic container and some water, not very much, barely enough to cover the bottom of the container because what you're gonna put in next is sand. And you wanna put it in there and spread it around. Just add enough sand so it just starts to turn dry on the very last layer. So here is a house that I'm gonna put on top. And now I will simulate an earthquake. The water rises up and it sort of turns to liquid. Soil liquefaction. And heavy things like houses and cars, they tend to sink like that. And then the soil rehardens and everybody's houses are stuck in the mud. Now, let's max it out. This is a giant tub of sand and water, and this is a vibrating platform that will simulate an earthquake. Now, as you can see, this sand is totally solid. I can jump all around on this sand, no problem. But when I turn on the vibrating table and simulate an earthquake, things will change. The vibrations bring the water below the sand to the surface and cause the sand particles to separate. What was solid now turns to liquid in my simulated earthquake, and I start to sink. I'm up to my shins! And there you go! Soil liquefaction! Hey, look at that! It's totally solid! <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! Soil liquefaction! I am totally... Uh-oh. You know what I realized? When it stops vibrating, it really becomes solid again. And it's very tough to... Well, there, there you go. Soil liquefaction. I'm, uh... I'm really kind of stuck in here. I... So Ann and I have made a large shaker table. Now it's just a matter of designing a building. We use lumber and cut it up, use screws to attach it all together, put a platform on top for a weight, and attach it securely to our shaker table. The building is super simple. Just four corners and a few planks around the outside. No structure in the middle. And finally, the big heavy weight on the top. There. We attach a pole to the shaker table so we can shake from a safe distance and try it out. Okay, very slow. Forward. Let's see how much shaking it can stand with our shakeometer. Good. That seems to be okay. Just kidding. Oh, oh no. Whoa. We barely start to shake our tower before it collapses. Oh, that didn't really last very long, did it? It completely folded up on itself. Uh, what do we do to fix this, make it better? I think the easiest thing we can do is to use thicker wood. It'll make it less wobbly. Okay, sure, let's make another one. High fives. Okay. We do have lots of wood, that's a good thing. Ann and I are trying small improvements every time. There. Our last building used thinner pieces of wood. Now we're using thicker wood, which we think will help keep the weight at the top from collapsing the building. Everything else about the design of our building is the same. We put the weight on top and fix our pole and we're good to go. All right, you ready? Problem. Okay. 
starting to creak, but it recovers. You can yeah. see it lean, and then it comes back, and it, and it resets. Definitely doing better than the last one. Oh, no. I'm impressed. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. here we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely did better than the first one. It did better than the first one. And the thicker wood definitely helped. But it was really starting to turn. I think on the next one, we need some platforms in the center to help strengthen it even more. Earthquake Building 3.0. Thicker wood this time, but with platforms in the middle. So we're going to see how well this version works with these middle parts that will hopefully reinforce. And they're just like the floors of a building. OK, well, let's find out if it's going to make any difference. The wall a little, but it looks pretty good. As soon as we start shaking, it's really obvious this building is more solid. Uh-oh. Starting to creak. Oh, it's really starting to creak. The platforms in the middle really seem to improve the structure. You can see it bend all the way over and still recover. But still, it wasn't long before... Really starting to lean. <laughs> extra pieces really kind of made it more impressive. It definitely lasted a lot longer than the other two. It did, but here's what I'm wondering. Are we going in the wrong direction? What do you mean? Well, because if it's really solid, it resists the change. OK, I see where you're going with this. So if we make it flexible, it can resist the shaking of an earthquake. I think it's worth a shot. Yeah, OK, let's do it. Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Busta Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker. My tuna fish and meatball sub soup is coming along quite nicely. But what will we have for dessert? I know. How about earthquake buildings? Ha <laughs> ha! It's a building made out of wafer cookies. But the people on Vanilla Street built in the gelatin neighborhood. And the people on Chocolate Street built in the crispy rice part of town. Exciting. Now, here comes the earthquake. Oh, no! Oh, it's shaking! Oh! The shaking has come and gone for the people on Chocolate Avenue, and their building is still standing. Now, let's take a look over here on Vanilla Street, and here comes an earthquake. Oh, no! Dear, looks like the people on Vanilla Street are going to have to rebuild their building because it's all fallen over and being eaten. <laughs> mm, delicious. Buildings can be built the same way, but the kind of soil they sit on make a large difference if there's an earthquake. Shaky, wiggly soil or solid, non-moving soil. So there you go. An experiment you can try at home. Delicious. Well, I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on this episode of Cooking with Science. Mm, now to try my soup. Seismometer in 60 seconds. Learning how to predict and measure earthquakes is an important branch of science. The Earth is shaking, but which way did the earthquake come from? It's all about measuring the vibrations. And to do that, you need a seismometer. All you need is a ball, some paper cups, some modeling clay, a pencil, and science tape, which is the same thing as invisible tape, except I use this tape for science. First, take your pencil and stick it straight down into the modeling clay. Then you take your cups and you arrange them in a circle and tape the cups down. And that goes right in the middle, just like that. Now what you do is you take the ball and you carefully balance it on the pencil. Now you have created a seismometer. It will tell you what direction an earthquake came from. Watch, I will be the earthquake. Ready? Did you see that? The ball fell into the cup facing the direction that I hit the table. And now I'm going to hit the table from over here. Yep, it fell in the direction that I hit the table. OK, let's try from over here. There you go, your very own seismometer that you can use to measure earthquakes that you create on the table. Back to our earthquake building. Ann and I tried a few different designs, and they each got a little better. But now we're wondering what would happen if we built the tower out of very flexible material. We used some plastic tubing and attached the wood with bungee cords, which are like big elastics. Wow, OK, so looks good. So let's test it. OK. 
And sure enough, when we start shaking it, the tower holds up to as much shaking as we can give it. Wait. What? Aren't we missing something? Oh. Yeah, we're missing the weight at the top. Of course. So I think we need to try it again. So we add the weight to the top, and then everything changes. Oh, oh no. Look at it twist. Oh, dear. It's twisted. A flexible go. tower is great until you try to put a weight at the top. And then it just seems <laughs> really unstable. Oh, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. It's totally bent. It didn't break at all. It just fell over. Yeah, it couldn't even support the weight. So it was almost too flexible. So I guess we should go back to a more rigid design. Mm -hmm. But what if we change the shape a little bit? Because mm -hmm. you know what I was thinking. This is a very stable shape. Mm -hmm. Triangle, because triangles are really strong. What about um, we, we make an X? Like a triangle within a triangle. Triangle, and then triangle. So that really reinforces all of the shaking, like all the motion. We'll never know until we try. All right. Uh-oh. I have all my friends coming over, and I don't have a table. But that's OK. I will make a table using my friends. This is an awesome experiment you can do with four friends. Come on in, science friends. I've got Sam and Dylan and Polly here to help me. So everybody turn to your left and sit sideways on the chair and then scooch the chairs into the middle. And then everybody leans back onto the knees of the other person. And then, this is why I said you need four friends, because you need the fifth person to remove the chairs! Oh. The reason why this works is because everybody's weight is being supported on the legs of the person next to them. Okay, we're gonna rotate in a circle, everybody. Okay, ready? Here we go, rotating, R rotating. Oh, oh, science table. Ooh. Hey, we're pretty good at this. Okay. Uh oh. Oh no, oh no! <laughs> so there you go. Awesome way to make a table using your friends. Well done. Well done. Science. Here's an experiment you can do to impress the adults in your house. You need three glasses, all of equal height, and three knives, not sharp knives, the dull knives you use, maybe the ones you use at dinner time. Take your three knives and put them in a triangle, all equally spaced out. Then move the knives together to make a little triangle, all right, like that. Then what you want to do is you want to carefully arrange the knives so each knife is going above one knife and below another knife. So there we go. Then you want to take this careful pattern that you created and you want to put it on top of your three glasses. One where each handle of the knives are gonna be. And if you place it carefully, and you've done the over-unders correctly, it will stay up. Pretty amazing, the knives support their own weight, but they don't just support their own weight, they can support a lot more weight too. Pretty amazing, right? This is a great experiment. It's also something really interesting that we can max out. Come on. And here you go, the maxed out knife balance. I've got three pieces of lumber and three barrels, and as you can see, the pattern is exactly the same. Under, over, under, over, under, over. Ha-ha. So, the question is, how much faith do I have in science? Ah, it totally supports my weight. I know it's going to work because I know that a two by four, which is the kind of lumber I'm using, can hold up my weight. So that means the structure can support me. <laughs> Science! You know what the cool thing is? The cool thing is that even though it's holding me up, each one of these pieces of wood is only up because it's supported by the others. You pull one out and it all falls apart. Ann and I have tried solid towers and flexible towers, and nothing has worked fantastically yet with a big weight on the top. Having a big weight on the top of our tower means we need something that will resist the movement of that weight. So now we're going to start with a triangle. Unlike a rectangle, triangles are very stable. 
A wider base keeps the structure from swaying too much. And cross braces in the middle mean that there are other triangles within our triangle. All the better to resist movement. Thank you. After Ann and I built our tower, we added the weight to the top, secured it to the base, and tried it out. OK, here we go. Ooh. Looking good. No problem. It's not twisting. It's not, not even leaning. Not even creaking. No, it looks really good. Wow, this one is really solid. As you can see, this tower is way more solid than our square tower or the flexible tower. OK, look at that. Like, if that's not an earthquake, I don't know what is. Look at that. Look at the way the ground is moving. I don't know if we can shake it much more than this. Faster. Our triangular tower is up past a level of shaking that made the other towers collapse. Now it's time to max out the shaking. There's only one level of shaking that we can do above this. What's that? We shake from either side. We give it all we have. The floor was bouncing from side to side, the tower was tilting and was totally solid. It's still holding strong. In fact, Anne and I wore out before the building showed any signs of falling over. I think we've done it. Woo! Nice yeah. job. Nice. <laughs> Science Max experiments at large earthquake proof building. I mean, come on. That was impressive. I like it. Here is an invisible tower. Huh? Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. I escaped. I'm just preparing my. I forgot my line. Hello. Just gonna add some more salt to the soup. Mmm, delicious. While well, humans have been figuring out ways to figure out just that, I've been, I said figure out twice. I'm gonna start again. Okay. English is not my first language. I guess those are staying in there.